When I was writing my book on sea trout fishing, I wanted to include some of the really key uh, and respected sea trout anglers from the UK and from around the world. A name that instantly came to mind was uh, the late Mock Morgan, uh, a name that uh, is, is largely synonymous with uh, sea trout fishing, especially in Wales, and a name uh, yeah, to, to this day, yeah, he was such an ambassador for the, for the sport, not just in Wales, but across the UK. Uh, a great guy. I approached him about uh, including some of his patterns, his notable patterns, uh, and Mock being Mock, uh, always uh, very obliging, uh, passed on his patterns, but not only that, uh, and you know, showing how generous Mock was, he actually contributed a lot of writing uh, alongside the patterns, he, he basically showed the evolution of a lot of the, the, the old sea trout patterns uh, to where they actually stand now. Uh, what he actually wrote ended up being a, an entire chapter in the book. Uh, so, yeah, internally indebted to uh, Mock from that perspective. One of his uh, patterns, and the one I'm going to show you now, is uh, the ones I've got on the card here, which basically started life as a Tyvee Terror, and then it has progressed into what would be known now as the Mock Sirt. So just a, a deadly, these are actually Mock's originals here. What makes these special, and yeah, I will never part with these, uh, what makes these special is that he literally tied these in hand, so he did not use a vice to tie these flies. Um, I wish I could do uh, you know, a fly even to close to that standard by utilizing a vice, let alone in my hand. So, yeah, I'm going to show you the the mock sit, which um, yeah, the evolution. If you if you read the chapter in my book, is you yeah, know from the Tybee Terror and how it ended up being the mock sit. I've got a long shank size six in the vice here, uh, and I've got some Vivas uh, thread black uh, black in ten o. It's going to start catching that in. It's uh, the body is made up of two halves. The first half being flat uh, silver tinsel, and the second half being black seals for. <coughs> pardon me. It's very much in line with, uh, if you imagine a, a a Peter Ross. So I've got some for the ribbing. I've got some uh, so body first of all to uh, just some standard silver tinsel and the rib is just some oval silver tinsel in silver. So I'm just going to marry these two up and introduce them in together. Because of the the second half of the body being something completely different you don't have to run this all the way down the body to create that even body you just want that first half to be even basically. Take that down more or less opposite where the hook point or the barb is. Bring the thread back up out of the way and then bring that silver tinsel up in touching turns. Like so. Bring it up slightly beyond halfway because you can basically then just tie over it and secure it. Like so, just double it back. That's nice and secure. Snip off the excess. You'll see everything that's in this fly. It's just got sea trout written all over it. Uh, between the uh, yeah, the silver, the black, peacock, jungle cock, it's got everything going. It really has. Uh, no wonder it's such a a deadly pattern. So for the second half, it's going to be black seals fur. And we want this, we're going to pick the seals fur out. Uh, so don't dub it too tightly. So just black seals fur, don't dub it too tightly because you want that bugginess or fussiness in that second half of the body. So just take that in and just dub it loosely. Like so. Build up a decent ball of the seal sphere, like so. Brush it back 
in towards that thorax section. The reason being is when we bring the rib up we don't want to be trapping any of that seal's fur. Bring the oval tinsel up in equal turns and I'm bringing this up in the opposite direction to what I bought that silver tinsel up in because then I am securing it in just in case the fish's teeth cut through it. Bring that up equal spacing, bring it up through that seal's fur, brush the seal's fur back and then tie over to secure. What I'm going to do is just double that back like so. That's nice and secure. Then we can cut off the excess. So before we do the wing, what we need to do is we can actually pull out the black seals for at this point because what you don't want to do is do it at the end because you'll just damage the, the wing. So just pull that seals for, create that bugginess. Again, we've loosely dubbed it for this reason. So just pull it out. And pull it out. Nothing now is being trapped because we've done the ribbing and stuff first we're just pulling out the dubbing which is gonna just bring a lot of life to the fly okay that's great just brush it back you're not gonna trap it as you do the wing so the hackle uh, mock actually utilized uh, he did a uh, false hackle uh, with uh, black uh, with a black cock cape I'm actually going to use uh, a saddle, a black hen, a natural black hen saddle for the hackling, just because I prefer the slight webbiness that you get from uh, hen and also from schlappen. If you haven't got hen, uh, if you haven't got hen that's long enough, uh, then you can use uh, black schlappen as well. So I'm just going to pull a feather off, I'm going to strip off the, and this is a natural black, you can use dyed black, it doesn't matter. Uh, I actually like the natural black because it has a, a slight uh, kind of bronzy hue to it at times, uh, just the natural sheen. So I'm just going to strip that back to create a tying in point like so and then introduce that just behind the eye there like so. And then release a lot of these fibers, the feather fibers like so. Brush them back before you start taking the hackle around. When you're happy, slowly as you go, keep brushing everything back as you turn. Keep brushing it back so you're not trapping anything down. You're not trapping the seal's fur. You're not trapping um, any of the, the hackles on the turn before. And to, it depends on the how... how uh, good quality that the feather is but two to maximum three should be sufficient don't overdo it it's going to take a couple of securing turns brush that feather back and then tie over that stem so it's not going to go anywhere like so and then snip off the excess of that feather as close as you can like so. So you see the fly coming together now. You see that webbiness. And the great thing about picking the seal's fur out is that it stops the hackle from collapsing against the body. It actually supports the hackle. If you do a lot of intruder type flies, you'll understand what I'm saying on that front. Uh, but it just stops the hackle. Uh, that's why I also prefer a full hackle rather than a false hackle. A lot of the time with a false hackle, again, it just pushes it a bit too much against the body, where a full hackle because of the stem still being intact, it does raise that hackle slightly. So, just like so. So, Mock's original wing would have been black squirrel. There's a two part wing. The original wing would have been uh, black squirrel. I actually prefer American opossum, as you probably know if you've been watching some of my videos. Um, I just prefer, it's an easier, um, easier fur to work with. But also I prefer that it's a bit more mobile than um, than squirrel, but not too mobile, for example, like um, 
Arctic Fox which does collapse. So it's going to take a pinch of this. So to take a pinch, it's got a lot of fine underfur, so you just need to strip that out. That's just going to add unnecessary bulk. Take out some of the longer guard hairs, you don't need them. Just create a nice wing. Again, if you think it's too bulky, now is the time just to strip some out. That's starting to look good. Let's roll it into shape. Again, if you've got some loose fibers, pick them out and then bring it up and measure it up. So you want this protruding, I'd say, um, probably around 5mm or so beyond the bend of the hook. So measure it up when you're happy, switch fingers, come in, pinch and loop and secure that down like so. Remember there's a two part wing so don't go too heavy on the first part. So there's the first wing in. Snip the, the butts off as close as you can uh, to the hook because otherwise you're just going to have a lot of bulk and mess to clean up at the end. So there's the first wing. So the over wing is um, Peacock Sword. Uh, you can marry peacock sword up to give you a very neat wing. I tend to just take a pinch from the same side rather than actually bothering to, to, to match uh, two, two feathers up. And you don't need too much of this. So not, you know, maximum four or five fibers. And it has a natural curvature. So utilize that natural curvature. A lot of the time, actually, rather than cutting it from the stem, you can just take a pinch as much as you want and then... Just pull it from the, the stem of that peacock and utilize it. Just hold it in that pinch with that natural curvature and bring it up and over that wing. And I want it protruding slightly beyond that black wing, just slightly. So it's kind of draping over it. When you're happy, I'm just going to take a couple of turns back just to gain two turns. And then come in with a pinch and loop secure. There you have it, riding nicely over. Make sure it's centralised, so that's good. See, so just nice and centralised there. Snip off the uh, butt of that peacock. Come in as close as you can. Final addition is jungle cock. You know, this is always an optional extra. If you haven't got jungle cock, just you know, do the flight without it. It's not uh, a kind of prerequisite of success or failure. Uh, it's always a, a, a bit a, it's a bit of an extravagance with the cost of the feathers so don't feel that you have to do this stage measure before you pluck it from the cape just measure it up so you've got two similar sized feathers got them there strip off the the base and then you're left with two matching feathers and introduce them one at a time just so you can measure measure them up. A couple of turns just to secure. Measure them up. A bit too much of that waste on that one. Measure it up. Have a look to where the length of the previous one is. And now is the time just to get the shape you're happy with. That's good. When you're happy, take a couple of locking turns, fold those stems back, and tie over the stems, like so. So all that's left to do now is to cut off those stems, tie over the head just to get it slightly neater in the head section, and then that's the flight done. You can see, you know, from a sea trout fly perspective, it really does have a bit of everything. If your thread is starting to split a little bit, just give it a, a quick twist. But then, I'm, so all I'm doing now is tidying up that head, like so. One piece of peacock that's annoying me there. There you go. And then just secure that off. But that is the fly. So that's the, the mock suit. Uh, I hope I've done mock justice with my tying there. Um, but tie a few up, give them a fish this year, and I hope they bring you luck. And uh, if they do bring you luck, perhaps 
give Mock a thanks. I'm sure he'll be watching down from somewhere. There you go, that's the end of the flight. So that's the Mock cert. Tight lines. <laughs>